Hello and welcome back to Spartan Student version 9. Today we're going to be going through our last tutorial, tutorial 11, inorganic and organometallic molecules. As always, to get to a tutorial, you'll click Activities. To open the Activities menu, click Tutorials, and then you'll scroll down today to our last entry here, Inorganic and Organometallic Molecules. So go ahead and click that to open the PDF. Per usual, I have it open in another window. And the first thing that we're going to do is open the model kit by clicking New Build. And you'll want to go from organic to inorganic. And we have rings selected here, but I'm going to select this bent trigonal geometry. And we are going to grab a sulfur atom and double click on screen. So you see here that we have this sulfur with five open valences. We're going to click this single bond here and switch the atom to fluorine in the periodic table. And quickly, I am going to add fluorine to the four open valences. You see me click here. And then by either holding the delete key or clicking this erase delete button, you can remove that last valence because we don't want that to be filled with a hydrogen. So now you can see we have sulfur tetrafluoride, and what we're going to do is set up a calculation with this. So I am going to go to the calculations, and quickly I'm going to minimize this. We're going to go to the calculations, and we're going to set up an equilibrium geometry with the density functional theoretical omega B97XD using the 631 G star basis set. Go ahead and click submit. And we'll have this sulfur tetrafluoride here. Save that, click OK, and I will come back to you once this is completed. OK, so just a moment later, we've got our data back. Now, if you click Properties, you can click on the sulfur atom or on any of these fluorine atoms and ask yourself the question whether the electrostatic charge of these is consistent with covalent bonding or ionic bonding. And what you would expect to see there. And next we're going to go ahead and add the highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO map there, and we're going to take a look at where these electrons are present. So you can see the orbital there. We've got nice structure. All right. So we're going to close out of this, and we're going to move on to building benzene chromium tricarbonyl. So for that, what I'm going to do is click this tetrahedral geometry and go into the periodic table and grab chromium. I'm going to double click on screen, and then I'm going to go to ligands, and I'm going to select benzene, and then I'm going to add it to any open valence there. And then we're going to select carbon monoxide as a ligand there, and we're going to add that to the remaining three open valences. Just going to minimize that. And you'll see we've built benzene chromium tricarbonyl there. So we're going to go to File and then Build New Molecule. We're just going to add a benzene and minimize that as well. OK, we're going to click View to exit that build mode. And then we're going to set up a calculation. It's going to be an equilibrium geometry calculation. But instead of using this density functional me method, we're going to switch it to the semi-empirical PM3 method. And this should just take a couple seconds to complete. So I'm going to click OK. And we're going to pre-queue a couple of surfaces Actually, we're just going to look at the electrostatic potential map for this, and then we're going to leave this global surface checked. OK, so I am going to go ahead and submit this calculation. Click Save, OK. All right, so within just a couple seconds there, we've got our molecules. I'm going to open the spreadsheet and check both of these on. You'll see they're overlapping. I'm just going to hit the Control key and move them. Then I'm going to go to the model menu and select coupled to toggle these to be uncoupled. I'm going to click on the chromium complex. And we're going to want both of these
benzene faces to be pointing out to you. So I'm going to reselect coupled and center these. And then what I'm going to do is go to the surfaces and add the electrostatic potential map. Next, I'm going to click on a surface, uh, right click that is, click properties, and then we're going to reset the min max to the uh, absolute min max there. And since global surfaces is still checked, we've got both of these um, at a new min max. I'm going to add a legend there, but you can see we've got a slightly negative region here. However, over here on this molecule, this is starting to approach positive. So because the benzene on the right here is bonded to this chromium, you can see it's got a lot less overall negativity than this benzene who has the ability to still act as a ligand point. All right, so we're going to close out of these, and we're going to move on to the ziegler nada polymerization of ethylene portion here. So we're going to select New Build. We're going to go to this trigonal sort of geometry, this uh, triplanar, and then we're going to switch from chromium over to zirconium, and we are going to click this on screen. Next, we're going to go to ligands, and we're going to select cyclopentadienyl. And we're going to click on two of the three open valences of zirconium here. And lastly, we're going to go to the organic, and we're just going to add an sp3 carbon to the remaining open valence on zirconium. Next, we're going to click Groups, and we're going to select this alkenyl. I already had it selected here. Um, and we're just going to insert this anywhere on the, on the screen, so we can just throw it over there if we like. Now we want to orient these such that the ethylene is poised to break its bond with uh, Th this double bond and turn it into a single bond between uh, this carbon and zirconium and then we will want this carbon to end bonded to this carbon. So I'm just going to quickly move this over here, reorient, move this here, and I'm using a combination of the control key, the uh, left mouse button and the right mouse button to orient my ethylene appropriately. So we are going to select this guest transition state from the build menu. I'm just going to click view actually to take us out of the uh, builder and then we're going to go back to this guest transition state. So one after another we're going to click on the ethylene carbon and on zirconium, but we're going to start by clicking on the zirconium to carbon, this bond here, and then we're going to click on the methyl carbon and we're going to click on one of these ethylene carbons. Next, we're going to click on this ethylene double bond, and then we're going to click on the other ethylene carbon and zirconium, and you'll see that our picture on the PDF is starting to look more like what we've got going on here with these arrows pushing and these dotted lines to represent new bonds being formed. So I'm going to click this guest transition state button, and you'll see we've got this chelation going on. It's in our database, so we've guessed this as the transition state. We're going to set up a calculation. We're going to use that PM3 method again and check the IR box. We'll also want to change the total charge from neutral to cation. And then we're going to go ahead and click Submit. And I'm just going to name this after the formula here. So we're going to do CP2. ZrMe space cation plus ethylene. All right, so I'm going to click save. 
and our calculation has started. Should just take a few seconds here to complete. All right, so just a few seconds later, we've got this uh, returned. And we are going to, as you may have suspected after we checked the infrared box, head into the spectra panel and add this calculated IR. So then we're going to click tables and we're going to take a look at this imaginary frequency here. I'm actually going to uncheck that, rotate this so you can get a little bit better view of the uh, transition state going on here. Zoom that in, bring this down, and then click that so you can see this vibrating. So the I represents an imaginary uh, frequency. That's what the whole list is preceded by. Now, would you describe this process as concerted or occurring in discrete steps? All right, so I'm going to quickly grab this peak and just show you the max. And that is going to do it for today and for the Spartan Student 9 tutorials.